Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Ehud Barak, Part 2. We left off the conversation earlier talking about the former Prime Minister of Israel, highly connected Israeli military man, Ehud Barak, and the fact that he is not only one of Jeffrey Epstein's accused enablers, he is also being incredibly accused of taking part in Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking ring. We're going to continue with our discussion about Ehud Barak, and we're going to jump right into the article. This is part two of our part three series. This article is from the Daily Mail, and the headline, Exclusive, Married Israeli politician Ehud Barak is seen hiding his face entering Jeffrey Epstein's New York City townhouse as a bevy of young beauties were also spotted going into the mansion. Despite his claim, he never socialized with the pedophile and his girls. Now, we talked about this earlier, and I said I was going to add some more meat to the bone, a little more context to the story, so that is what we're going to do. So in this second part, we're going to talk about the fact that Ehud Barak is obviously a liar in his own words, right? Oh, I never was around these girls. Meanwhile, he has a buff pulled up over his face as he's going into Epstein's pad with all of these girls that are there. So again, another person who really thinks we're going to believe what they have to say, considering they've been, they've put together uh, an established pattern of lying. Why would anyone believe anything these people have to say? Ehud Barak, you're another one. We're going to need some evidence, my man, some receipts, something that proves your story. Because right now, the way the evidence is going and where we're sitting at right now, the, the perspective that we have, my man, you are guilty as guilty could be. This article was authored by Martin Gould. The ever-expanding probe into Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile ring is now threatening to derail the Israeli election as DailyMail.com has obtained exclusive pictures of one of Benjamin Netanyahu's main challengers hiding his face as he entered the convicted sex offender's Manhattan townhouse. Now, folks, this article was first published in July of 2019. Now, remember, these two articles we're reading, the one from earlier and this one, are both to just establish some context and to give you a bit of a historical perspective of what's going on. And then part three will be the newest article that, ha- that came out in lieu of the information that we learned in the last couple of days. A bevy of young women were also seen going into the multimillionaire pedophile's lavish seven-story home on the same day that Ehud Barak snapped. Okay, look, he lied and said that he was never around any girls at Jeffrey Epstein's, anything like that. He hardly knew Jeffrey Epstein. And according to him, his uh, meetings with Epstein were anywhere between 10 and 100 times. 10 and 100 times. How much more vague could you possibly be? How much more vague can you get? And furthermore, I don't know about you guys, but if I've had uh, meetings with people for anywhere from 10 to 100 times, it's fair to say that I'm a bit closer to them than uh, Barack would like to let on here. And again, another one of these enablers, another one of these participants who thinks that they're going to be able to distance themselves from this story. Well... You're not, going to be able, you're not going to be able to do it this time around, Mr. Prime Minister. Barack, a former Prime Minister of Israel, now trying to make a comeback in Israeli politics, has long had business ties to Epstein, which Netanyahu's team are now trying to exploit. And, don't, you know, Netanyahu's another one. I'm not a big fan of Bibi Netanyahu, another warmonger, another person who loves to have his uh, fingers in the pie of regime change, and just an all-around bad dude, in my opinion. But at the end of the day, politically speaking, of course he's going to use this as a cudgel to try and smash uh, Barack over the head with, right? That's just how politics works. But don't for a minute think that Netanyahu gives a damn about these survivors either, because he does not. 
and the pictures that DailyMail.com has obtained are certain to add fuel to the fire, as Barack claims he has never met Epstein in the company of women or young girls. In the company of women or young girls, folks. Again, you see the established pattern of lying here? It's the same thing with Prince Andrew. It's the same thing with Dubin. It's the same thing with Wexner over and over and over again. And I'm just some guy hanging out in his home studio, right, putting the pieces together. You mean to tell me the investigators who are getting paid a nice hefty salary, who are in charge of us, you know, going to prison or not, can't put two and two together here? They can't follow these breadcrumbs? If that's the case, Western civilization is lost anyway. But in reality, we know the deal. It's not the investigators on the ground, it's the bureaucrats above them that are killing this, that are making sure it goes nowhere. People like Darth Barr and his retinue of stormtroopers. The photographs were taken in January 2016 after Epstein, now 66, had returned to New York after an overseas trip. Within hours, at least four young women had gone to the home that the federal government wants to seize as part of its new case against the pedophile. Within a few hours. What do you think? They were all showing up there to watch TV? You think they were gathering around the TV to watch Sex in the City? Or perhaps they were going to sing some Kumbaya or play charades? Or was Jeffrey Epstein bringing girls in to satisfy the needs of his buddy Ehud Barak? Personally, folks, it's not a stretch of the imagination from where I'm sitting to think that the intentions were not um, pure, let us say, with these women coming over. And even if they were not underage girls, that's that's not the whole issue here, right? This man said he was never around any women or girls. So it's his own words that are coming back to smash him in the face again. Just like with the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family and his ridiculous interview with Emily Maitlis. These people are not built for this life. DailyMail.com reported at the time that the women included longtime Epstein friends Sue Hamblin and Jennifer Kalin, as well as Russian model Lana Posadiva. A fourth unidentified woman was seen joining Epstein on a trip to Titoboro Airport in New Jersey where Epstein keeps his plane and where he was arrested on the tarmac on July 6th after he flew in from France. And you know what's funny about that? Jeffrey Epstein might have been arrested at Titoboro Airport, but don't you think that should have made the news? Where was CNN with all of their cameras? Where was CNN there to make Jeffrey Epstein look like the asshole? Oh, they weren't scoring any political points at the time, right? So it wasn't worth it to them. And I don't care where you fall on the Roger Stone issue, like the guy or not. It's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is, a no-knock warrant was issued for him. They kicked in his door, and CNN was standing outside in glee to get it all on tape, just to score some political points. Where was CNN and their vaunted journalism team when Jeffrey Epstein was getting the bracelet slapped on him? They were nowhere to be found, folks. Do you know why? Because the legacy media is a dumpster fire. At the time, the identity of the man seen with his own security detail going to Epstein's mansion on East 71st Street was unclear. Now, DailyMail.com has confirmed it was Barack. And you would think that a guy who was involved in the spy game, involved in spycraft, involved with Israeli military and intelligence, would know a thing or two about keeping his identity secret and not meeting with a, a pedophile like Jeffrey Epstein. You would think that this man would have an idea about how to go about this, right? But it goes to show you that they don't even feel like they have to traverse those dark back channels when it comes to associating with each other. They'll just be brazen and slam it right in your face over and over and over again. And then they'll say to you, what are you going to do about it? And guess what, folks? For years and years and years, we all sat back and we took the shit pie to the face and we came back for seconds most times. But this time around, you involve children, you involve these young girls, and then you have the audacity to give this 
this animal, this plea deal, this immunity deal that covers not only him, but all of his friends, and you think we're going to come back and have another helping of your disgusting shit? The answer is no. Separately, he admitted to the Daily Beast that it was him, but said his visit was innocent. I was there for lunch or chat, nothing else, so what? Yeah, you know, it's how I do it. I go on, you know, uh, trips overseas to go have lunch or a chat with a known pedophile, because that's how normal people roll. That's the kind of circle most people keep. What? is even going on. Do these people even listen to what they're saying? Do they understand that the rest of us have just been locked in our homes for the most part for over three months with nothing else to do but pull the curtain back on what they're up to? The house of cards is coming down all around them and the narrative is crumbling at all points. And guys like Ehud Barak have no idea what to do. This is a man who has never been out of control of the narrative. This is a man who has always been in control of every situation he has ever been in, I would guess. And now, the spotlight is on him. The useful idiots, the chattel, us, well, we're now paying attention to all of your bullshit. Brock, now 77, was wearing a camouflage design neck gaiter, which he pulled high over his face almost to his glasses when he went into the East 77th Street mansion. When he came out more than an hour later, he was wearing it on his head. And, you know, look, I can understand, like, when you're a public figure, if you're trying to keep a low profile, like, you don't want to sign autographs or you're a famous musician or whatever it may be. But this guy, really... Unless you're an absolute geopolitical nerd when it comes to the Middle East and Israel, you couldn't pick this guy out of a lineup. All right? There's no reason for you to have this buff over your face. There's no reason for you to try and play cloak and dagger here. Unless, of course, you know that associating with this pedophile is a bad idea and you did it anyway. Makes you wonder, huh? Either A, Epstein was exerting incredible, incredible influence over Ehud Barak. Or B, Ehud Barak was part of the command structure. He told the Daily Beast he was bundled up against the January New York weather. It was so cold, the Middle Easterner had to put, a hat, put on a hat. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I, I guess, you know, that could, that's my excuse when I go to the mountains. I live in the desert too. It's 115 degrees out today. I don't have to bundle up like that when I go to New York. New York isn't that cold. All right, don't get me wrong. There's days where it's cold in New York, no doubt about it. But New York, ain't, it ain't mountain cold, homie. It ain't altitude cold. I can promise you that. The bundling up is not because you're cold. The bundling up is because you know you should not be at Jeffrey Epstein's and you're doing it anyway. And you're in, in, in the process, lifting up both middle fingers and pointing them at everybody. Well... Mr. Barack, I want you to take a good look towards Las Vegas. And you see those two double middle fingers raised high in the sky? Those are mine, and they're for you. He also said he had been to Little St. James Epstein private island in the U.S. Virgin Islands, admitting it was after revelations that Epstein used the island for underage sex. Again, he said he had not been to any parties or met girls there. No, you just went down to the island to have a swim because, you know, the former ex-prime minister of Israel has access to no other luxurious islands to take a dip in. He can't go someplace off of in the Mediterranean and take a dip. He has to come to the U.S. Virgin Islands and go to Jeffrey Epstein's because, you know, it's the honorable thing to do. These people are all sick, depraved maniacs. And these are the people we keep electing into office to control our lives, to write the laws, and to dictate how our future will go. We have to do better, folks. We have to do better. Brock's name and contact numbers were among around 50 circled in Epstein's Little Black Book, which was published by Gawker in 2015. Other names circled included several victims, excuse me, several survivors of his pedophile ring, Donald Trump, 
Courtney Love and lawyer Alan Dershowitz. And remember, we talked about the Courtney Love story with Prince Andrew, how old Joe Exotic of the Windsor family supposedly showed up at Courtney Love's pad one night looking to get down, looking if she was down to give him a little sugar, a little love. So it's not beyond the realm of doubt that Courtney Love is connected in some way. Now, I don't think she's a participant in, 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 in you know, a leadership role or anything like that. But again, she's been mentioned many times here in the legacy media itself, in the mainstream media. So as an investigator, you would think that she definitely should be spoken to. Details for former President Clinton and Britain's Prince Andrew were included, but had not been circled. Barack, who was an Israeli prime minister from 1999 to 2001, and then defense minister from 2007 to 2013, has been seen as having a real chance of ending Netanyahu's 10-year reign at the helm of Israeli politics. You know, I see it over and over in every country worldwide. The two people that we put up for president, or leader of countries, wherever it may be, are these really the two best minds we have to offer folks? You mean to tell me that there are 150 contestants on American Idol, but these knuckleheads, Biden, Trump, Netanyahu, Ahud, Barak, etc., etc., are the best we have? Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson. Those are the best minds we have, huh? Or is it all orchestrated? Meet the new boss, same as the old boss over and over again, like NFL retread coaches. Absolutely ridiculous. Last month, he announced the formation of a new party to fight do-over elections, scheduled for September 17th after an earlier poll ended in deadlock. This weekend, Barack wrote on Facebook that he is trying to break off his business relations with Epstein. For almost five years, a company associated with Epstein has been a passive investor in a limited partnership legally registered in Israel and under my control, he wrote. Folks, come on. I mean, are you kidding me right now? How is this guy not slapped with a RICO indictment? I don't care that he used to be the prime minister of Israel. What, he's above the law in the United States? Negative, wrong, absolutely not. But yet... He is under protection. He is afforded all sorts of diplomatic immunity even, I'm sure. Well, this man needs to be brought to justice because not only is he accused of heinous behavior with Virginia Roberts, this man is obviously fully and utterly engaged in money laundering issues with Jeffrey Epstein and Jeffrey Epstein shell companies. Can we get an audit, please? According to the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, Epstein invested millions of dollars in Barack's company Carbine, Carbine, which develops geolocation software for emergency services. And a a ton of 911 services in the United States use this software. That's another thing that should be brought up. This software should be jettisoned and new developers should be brought in that don't have ties to Jeffrey Epstein. I don't want my tax dollars being used on this. I don't want my tax dollars being funneled to people who were not only enabling Jeffrey Epstein, but partaking in his disgusting activities. No thanks. Carbine also received $2.5 million from Epstein's former close friend, Victoria's Secret boss, Les Wexner, the Miami Herald reported. Yeah, nothing to see here, folks. There's no money laundering going on here, no money washing. These funds were never made through ill-gotten gains. How dare you say that? Have you seen the charities I'm involved with? I had my family on the island. Oh, my name is on that building. Just a few of the excuses they like to spill out of their stupid, disgusting mouths. Wexner bought Epstein's mansion for a record $13.2 million in 1989, but never moved in. You th- I wonder why, huh? He never moved in, but all those updates were made. All those video cameras were put in. All for what reason, folks? Do you think it was there so that he could, uh, you know, make some tapes so he could have some fond memories to look back on when he got a little bit older? Or was the place set up for the honey trap? Occam's razor, my friends. Ownership was transferred to Epstein in 2011. The house is now valued at around $77 million. 
Wexner says he severed ties from Epstein about 10 years ago. Yeah, okay. At the weekend, Barack told the Israeli version of Meet the Press that he had no idea that Epstein's charges involved underage girls. He'd served a sentence for soliciting prostitution. The indictment didn't say she was a minor, he said. This is, this is the man that was in charge of Israel, folks, okay? And look, you know I'm not somebody who comes on here and, and goes off the rails about Israel. I don't have a problem with Israel as a country. I know a lot of people do, but I do not. I know that the Israeli people are like the American people, man. They just want to live a normal damn life. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to be spied on. They don't want to be involved in a bunch of stupid ass wars, but they got leaders like Ehud Barak who comes out and he has the audacity to say that he had no idea that Jeffrey Epstein was involved with underage girls. It was for solicitation. This is a guy who was the prime minister of Israel. This is a man who has deep ties to the Mossad. And you mean to tell me nobody gave him a briefing? Nobody pulled him to the side and said, hey, this isn't the right move here, pal. Of course they did. Of course he knew. And of course he is lying. The American system itself did not label him as a persona non grata, Barack added. The secretary who just resigned the Trump administration was the prosecutor and he, and he said he'd been negligent. So, he, so you expect me to have noticed anything wrong? He added, referring to Alex Acosta who resigned as labor secretary last week. And folks, this is the perfect example of what enabling does and how bad it is when people like Donald Trump are wrapped up with someone like Jeffrey Epstein. Barack, uh, uh, Ehud Barak just told you that because of the enabling of Donald Trump and Acosta being named as the labor secretary, that why should he have to answer questions if Donald Trump was hanging out with Epstein? And you see how wrapped up the knot becomes? And you see why I go off the rails and go crazy about the enabling? It is important that we bring the fact that the enablers, bring up the fact that these enablers were an intricate part of this man building his public profile. And afterwards, some of these high profile, especially American enablers, were used as excuses by people like Barack for the, why they were hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. Again, folks, it's all about context. All about context. Netanyahu's right-wing Likud party has already called for a criminal investigation into Barack's ties to Epstein. The prime minister tweeted that he should be investigated immediately. Oh, this, you know, Netanyahu should shove it with that nonsense too. Don't get me wrong, an investigation would be perfectly warranted. But Netanyahu, again, Political games. What do I always talk about? What do, you, what do I always go crazy about? And believe me, I know tribalism when I see it. I was busy engaging in it for many years. Until I became a political refugee, folks, I was engaging in it. So I know the signs. I know when people are just gorging at the buffet of confirmation bias. And people like Netanyahu... Oh boy, he is the worst. He is a hypocrite. He is a liar. And in my opinion, he is also a war criminal. Epstein is currently locked up in the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Manhattan. Maybe not. As he awaits for a judge to announce whether he should be released on bail. He has been charged with sex trafficking and conspiracy to traffic minors for sex. His lawyer told Judge Richard Berman on Monday that he was willing to post $100 million in bail, but prosecutors say he should remain in custody until his trial, as their case is already significantly stronger and getting stronger every day. So that means that they definitely had more than Epstein, right? The question is, what more did they have, and what the hell are they sitting on? Prosecutor Alex Rossmiller said a false Saudi passport with Epstein's picture was found in a safe when cops raided his mansion last weekend, alongside hundreds of naked photographs of women and girls, piles of cash, and dozens of diamonds. You know what we call that in the Italiano world? That's the bag of a lamist. That's somebody who is about to go on the run, who knows that the feds are closing in, and that it's almost time for a stint in college. So you have all of that stuff on hand so you can make your getaway. 
He said several women had come forward following Epstein's indictment, and now prosecutors are trying to corroborate their accusations. Two survivors, Courtney Wilde, and they, they spelled her, na her name wrong here in the article. They called her Anna Farmer, but obviously it's Annie, told Judge Berman that Epstein should be denied bail. I was sexually abused by Jeffrey Epstein at the age of 14, said Wilde. He is a scary person to have walking the street. Farmer said, I was 16 years old when I had the misfortune of meeting Mr. Epstein here in New York. She gave no details other than saying he had been inappropriate with her. All right, folks, so look. Again, building that profile of Ehud Barak. Now you have the context. Now you have some meat on the bone. So when we discuss part three, the third article, you will get an idea of the overall picture of who Ehud Barak is and, and have, I hope, a little bit more of an understanding of how powerful and how connected he is. So I will have part three for you tomorrow morning. All right, everybody, I hope you all have a fantastic evening. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. You can find the link to this article in the description box along with the GoFundMe link and all that other good stuff. All right, everybody, until later on.